Hello everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to the logical journey of the Zumbinis. We're at Shelter Rock today, ready to take on Who's By You on the oh-so-hard difficulty. It's about time we got there, because we're about to get onto the very, very hard difficulty for both the Big Ben, the Hungry, and the Mountains of Despair, because we have to go for those so frequently. Anyhow, let's go up and see what up. It looks as if the kind captain has upped the ante. Oh, really? Yeah, this is... this is an interesting one. That's everyone's favorite frog captain, Captain Cajun. My, y'all cuter than a pot of black-eyed peas! <laughs> Okay then. Captain Cajun's ferry boat level two. Seating on Captain Cajun's ferry boat is very important. Zumbinis can only sit next to each other if they have at least one matching feature. Same hair, eyes, nose, color, or feet. Now there are more links between seats for a greater challenge. So you remember on Not So Easy, there was just a long line of chairs going around. This time there are two long lines of chairs adjacent to each other. So now instead of every Zumbini having to share at most one trait with two Zumbinis, now sometimes they'll have to share a trait with three Zumbinis. So that's a bit more of a challenge. But like I, what I like to do is find the most common Zumbini trait and save those for last. So let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, green hat hair is the most common. We will save them for last. Fine, sit wherever you want to. I don't really care. Lies. Let's see. Bolt cut and sunglasses. Yeah, that's cool. There you go, you got it. Uh let's see. Bicycle and bald, yes, that's good. You've got a red nose. <laughs> and you've got a sprain and a bald head, that's pretty cool. You've got normal eyes. <laughs> oh sweet. So now <sighs> Sure. So now at this point, all the people left have green hat hair, so once we put a blue nose guy next to him, we can literally throw these last zoominis on wherever we please. And that makes ah, it a much, much easier. Sure. There you go, you got it. Well, that was simple. <laughs> Just do that. <laughs> Travel on, brave adventurers, that wonder of the wetlands. Bruno, the shape swapper, has a special tool for swapping lily pads. Now they'll need to make their own pads across. So this is easily the challenge that changes the most drastically. And you're about to see why. Now we have a magic wand that lets us swap the lily pad sh uh, <laughs> literally the lily pads. Uh, there is a limited amount of times you can swap those, so do it sparingly. But that actually makes this arguably easier than the first difficulty. So what I like to do is find which paths are already completed for us, or which paths are literally missing one. So the blue path is completed. So we'll send them along that way. How about the white path? White path's missing one. Purple path. Purple path's completed. Yeah, let's do that. Red path is almost completed, but there's one missing. Likewise, I believe the white path is also missing just one. That's a shame. Well, no, the white path is missing two. And the nice thing is if your toad gets stuck on this one, you can actually save them by using the magic wand. Which is pretty nice. How about orange? Is orange almost complete? Orange, I'll have to swap two of them. Same with white. I also want to make sure I don't screw up any of the symbol paths. I could not care less for the lily pad shaped paths. I will literally use my magic wand to avoid having to do that. So, X, 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 X. Nope, that leads to a dead end. Oh, diamonds. 
Oh, the diamond path is complete. Sweet. Let's take the diamond path. For Disney Diamond Club members. Alright, the X path now, on the other hand. That's a bit less complete. Yeah, that requires a little more swapping. Well, might as well make the color paths a bit more colorful, don't you think? Unless there's a flower path open. Nope. Most of these are just gone by one. Or, like, if we swap two lily pads, it'll make a path open. Alright, so let's make the orange path open up. There we go. Orange path is open. No, okay, that's not the one. I was afraid that would be the one he would hop on. Okay, the path is still open for you, frog, so don't give me that sass. Yeah, you'll see the red part of the wand is slowly going down. That means that the magic wand has a limited power, and if you swap too many times, you'll eventually not be able to swap it anymore. But it's not that big of a deal. And honestly, after this, this level really doesn't get any harder. Like, the not-so-easy difficulty is arguably one of the harder difficulties for this given challenge. Because only one new gimmick gets added in the n next two difficulties, and once you know how to deal with it, it's very easy and very manageable. Okay. Now we gotta deal with the flower paths and the X paths. Alright, if we... Oh wait, nope. No, no, no. Wrong one. Yeah, nope, that was the wrong one as well. I'm sure I could have used the magic wand less if I had just taken advantage of the lily pad shapes. But who wants to do that? Also, apparently using the uh, magic wand screws up the trajectory of them a little bit, but once they go through the path again, it's not that big a deal. Then after that, we just need to get the flower one through, and we can completely ignore the lily pad shapes, because I hate looking for lily pad shapes. Again, you don't necessarily have to use my strategy for this level, this is just the one that I am the most comfortable with. Okay. And now the flower one is open. Woohoo! Now, just we gotta ride that toad twice, and we'll be good. Yeah, it's weird, because for who's by you, but what I've noticed is Captain Kitchen's Fairy gets progressively harder on each difficulty. This one only really gets harder from oh so hard to very hard. And then the Stone Rise gets easier with each difficulty rank until the last one, in which case it becomes horrendous. But besides that, the Swamp is very interesting difficulty, whereas I feel like the Deep Dark Forest has a much better difficulty curve, with one exception, which we're actually going to find out in the next episode. Well, next two free episodes. When I go to the forest next time, you'll see what I mean. There's one puzzle that's just not well designed. Ugh, not looking forward to that one. Zumbinis will get a rise out of these stone hexes if they can make the right connections. Oh boy, time for the stone rise. Also, I want to point out, I think it's really cool that regardless of which path you take in the fork in the road, the last challenge is getting up a wall. So this one is getting it up by 
rising upwards, and the other one is by using the mud ball. Stone Rise, level 2. The Zumbinis must link together and to turn the stone elevators on and continue their journey. Link Zumbinis together in groups of three, according to one common feature, such as red noses. The symbols on the stone pads now show you what attribute the Zumbinis must share. I personally think this one is a lot easier than the first Stone Rise, because the first Stone Rise, the challenge was the last link, you'd always have one Zumbini that didn't work out. Well, for this one, you can just put the last Zumbini there, and he doesn't have to link up with anybody. So this one's actually pretty darn easy. My personal opinion. Okay. He's got to do a different one than that. <laughs> Alright, we need two people with the same nose, and then another two people with the same nose. Alright, that's a little unfortunate. Oh, he's the only... Well, actually, no. That works out perfectly. We can just put her there instead. And then this guy can go here. Hip, hip, zombie! Hip, hip, zombie! Yeah, honestly, that one you really don't have to think through. Just kind of do stuff, and it puts itself together, honestly. I contend that is easier than the first difficulty rank for that level. And that takes us once more to the Mountains of Despair. But we're not going there in this episode. We first have to go to Zumbiniville and check out the sweet new building we built because we went through the swamp again. Ah, almost out of the woods, shall we say? Get them through the next part of the journey and these Zumbinis are home free. Yay. If we go for the big, the bad, and the hungry one more time, we're getting upped to very, very hard. <coughs> oh, new building! This courthouse was constructed for the Zumbinis, who finagled the ferry boat, successfully swapped lily pads, and connected the current. When traveling was oh so hard, April 6th, 2018. Zumbiniville is already filling up rapidly. This is great. Alright, and that's where we're going to leave it off for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. If you tune in next time, believe it or not, we will be going back to the Big, the Bad, and the Hungry on the highest difficulty rank. After that, I don't think... After that, I believe we'll do Mountains of Despair on the last difficulty rank. And then after that, all we have to do is these two paths. A few more times each, and that's actually going to be the end of the main Let's Play. So... Wow, this is going by real fast. Hope to see you guys there. Until we meet again, have a great day and God bless.